It's a nearly once in a lifetime event. The April 8th solar eclipse will be the last one we can see in the continental U.S. until 2044. Are you looking for answers in these strange times? Do you ever wonder if the prophecies in the Bible are coming true? Today, we're diving into a celestial event that's got everyone talking. The total solar eclipse coming to America on April 8th, 2024. It's a once in a decade phenomenon, but is it just a cool science experiment? Or is there something more? Join us as we explore the mystery behind this eclipse. We'll uncover what science has to say, but we'll also delve into the biblical perspective. Could this be a sign from God? There are some signs that we are going through the times predicted in the Bible when prophecy is gradually becoming a reality. Jesus warned about the coming of man, and in chapter 21, verse 25, people talked about strange things that will happen in the sky. And on the ground when reading the article posted by the Chicago Post, I couldn't help but remember the words God taught. The article talked about a rare phenomenon that was about to happen. The total solar eclipse on April 8, 2024 from northern Mexico to New England will turn afternoon into night in about four minutes. This is not only a celestial event, but also a testament to the magic of the universe. The air column will suddenly become about 10 degrees colder, silencing both birds and insects in the darkness. Basswood trees will reduce food production, and nocturnal animals such as owls and owls will begin to be especially active. Events that are not only signs of the times predicted by the Bible, but are also reminders to us of the magnificence of creation and preparation for unforeseen changes. These are the signs of a total solar eclipse, when the moon temporarily casts all of the sun's light over a region of the Earth. But this year's total solar eclipse is special, because we may not see another solar eclipse in the United States for the next two decades. In a blink of an eye, that may be the time when two opposing views on this event begin to emerge, attracting the attention of the community of research scientists. That this is a wonderful event, a once-in-a-lifetime phenomenon. But there is another perspective coming from biblical sign watchers who believe that maybe this is a sign from God. Could this event be a sign? Could this be a warning from above? These questions arise in the minds of observers when such an infrequent event approaches. A known publication called Hingler Daily took a biblical view of the event in an article titled 2024 Solar Eclipse Coincidence or Warning. Finally, they analyzed that the pattern of two eclipses forming the letter X on the map of the United States also occurred in the early 1800s. The first solar eclipse on June 16, 1806, and the second on September 17, 1811, raised questions about the meaning and signs of the event. This event is not only a scientific matter, but also part of the spiritual search and the deeper meaning of what is waiting ahead, when X temporarily closes and we continue on our path. In America's history, Nothing can compare to the terrifying power of the new Madrid earthquake. It was not only a geological tragedy but also an extremely terrifying event when the ground shook, threatening the safety of millions of people. In the heart of the Mississippi Valley, New Madrid became the focus of panic. But miraculously, these earthquakes crossed the border into remote areas and spread shock. As far away as New York, Boston, Montreal, and even Washington, D.C., President James Madison and his wife J. Lai felt this vibration in the heart of the White House, a place usually considered safe and secure. The church in Boston rang each painful bell like a prayer in the face of an unforeseen crisis. From December 1811 to March 1812, more than 2,000 earthquakes rocked the Midwest, and in Missouri, New Madrid, near the confluence of the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. The number ranged from 6,000 to 10,000. Every earthquake, every threatening wave, every transition is a new challenge for life. The images of devastation and the sense of terror have left the survivors confused and questioning whether we can predict when and where an earthquake will occur next. What will happen if we are not prepared for natural upheavals? What can we learn from such terrifying events? In the geological history of the world, there is no earthquake that can compare to what happened at New Madrid. Missy not only lasted a long time, but also left behind traces of immense damage. The serious earthquake here was listed on the list of America's most memorable seismic events in 1811 and 1812. New Madrid witnessed three terrible earthquakes that simultaneously created unpredictable consequences. On December 16, 1811, 
a powerful earthquake with a magnitude of 88.1 Richter caused powerful shockwaves to spread throughout the region. Just one month later, on January 23, 1812, another earthquake shock occurred. With an intensity of 7.8 degrees, it continued to make the people in the surviving area face a sense of fear and despair, and it did not stop there. In February of the same year, another terrible earthquake occurred. Awakening the ground with an intensity of up to 8.8 .8 degrees wrecked, shattering everything and spreading fear into people's hearts. The consequences of those earthquakes are not only physical, but also spiritual. It is impossible to fully describe the devastation and loss that people have to go through. But in the challenges they face, people also learned valuable lessons about patience, solidarity, and personal resilience. Looking back at those events, we can't help but wonder whether we were ready to face the terrible challenges, especially from Mother Nature. Are we well prepared enough to deal with unforeseen crises? And finally, what lessons can humans learn from earthquakes for the future in the coming days? Recently on the New Madrid Mystery website, a disturbing question was raised. Whether the completion of the X across the mid-US region on April 8, 2024 could lead to another disaster in the following months. In the face of concern and uncertainty, many people are beginning to ask what we should do when faced with these challenges and unforeseen events. Looking at the quoted Bible passage, quoting from Luke chapter 21 verses 25 to 27, we increasingly feel the change and anxiety in the world around us. There are strange signs in heaven and earth, and people's hearts gradually become afraid of the strong fluctuations of nature. How can we handle it? How do we keep faith and hope in such difficult times? We need to seek solidarity and mutuality. Together, we need to rely on the strength of human love and compassion to overcome challenges. And most of all, we need to believe in God's strength and providence in all situations and events. Can we see the positive things, new lessons and opportunities that arise together? Let us look for the light amidst the darkness and move forward together with faith and hope in a better future. What do you think about this? What are your thoughts or opinions on how we should respond to today's challenges? In the Bible, we find a treasure trove of information that is a source of inspiration and guidance for life. The pages of this spiritual spear book are not only a spiritual resource but also a specific guide for us in the trials of life. We are taught not to be afraid or insecure in the face of unknown things, but instead we need to be prepared to look at the prophecies in the Bible and see that they are not obscure puzzles but clear pictures of the future, the increase of civilization. Troubled fire is one of the signs emphasized in the Bible. This is an important message that tells us that we must be alert to what is happening around us and need to be equipped with knowledge and faith to when we approach the Bible. We not only find clarity and hope, but are also shaped by the warnings and preparations for the challenges of life in this world that we need to recognize. Aware that a series of false messages and false prophets are spreading on various platforms, there is an interesting piece of the puzzle that is the rise of demonic doctrines, a message that is causing a stir in people's hearts. Next is the familiar piece about the war and the rumors surrounding it. In this picture, we cannot ignore the growing apostasy. The love of many people gradually cools earthquakes and epidemics, along with supernatural signs in the sky. When combining all these elements, we begin to see a comprehensive picture that is, uh, the picture that the Word of God has drawn, tells us what will happen when the Word of God returns. Now the Word of God is talking a lot about the change of people in this era. Once again, we see a new picture of the future is gradually emerging, and society will witness the presence of people who cannot stand the truth. They will be drawn into the teachings of the devil and the appearance of false prophets and false messages on earth. Everywhere people will love only themselves and their possessions. They will be arrogant and blaspheme God. They will perform religious rites without faith and they will reject power that could make them become man of God. Now we need to discuss in more depth the characteristics of certain types of people. It is important for you to recognize those in your life that can put you in danger if the devil can do something to someone. Become something scary in your soul. They will know they have a great opportunity to influence you in a negative way. They know that it will be easier for you to trust if there is someone close to you who is encouraging you even if they are wrong. It is important for you to be alert to the signs that someone may be being used by the devil to sway you away from God's path. One of the first signs you should look for is encouragement from those who encourage you to do wrong things. The devil always tries to make these people or those who support you worse. Don't let yourself be deceived by these people, but hold on. 
This is a rewritten version of the passage, keeping the same meaning and story, but with more richness and appeal. There are people who push you into unnecessary places. You feel like you don't belong. They are the people who make you feel uncomfortable, especially when you just want to live a little easier. Sometimes they will tell you, don't be so stressed. Don't turn yourself into a magic roller. Saint, but a certain glass cannot make you a sinner. Such people are dangerous. They are a threat to your salvation, as said in a Corinthian chapter 15 verse 33 to verse 34. Be alert. Don't let yourself be fooled by bad friends. Their behavior can ruin your good morals. Be alert as you should be, and don't let your clarity fade because there are some people with condemnable ignorance of God and ignoring the truths about the end times. I want you to feel embarrassed thinking about this. You want to know how to identify a bad company while keeping your good morals? Oh, they have a way of encouraging you to do bad things. They push you to commit crimes. That is how they operate. They try to make you compromise your originality. They always tell you such things. Although sometimes it can be ignored, but don't forget that such bad behavior, such companies are often corrupt. They push you to commit crimes and lose your originality. When we recognize such people in our lives, it is important to protect ourselves and avoid away from them in life. A second sign that you can tell that someone has been trapped by the devil is when they try to control and manipulate you. This requires caution, because in knowledge and understanding, our God never imposes or controls us and does not force us to do anything. In fact, he has given us free will and the power to make our own decisions. When someone trying to interfere with your freedom, they are using that opportunity for personal gain. The Bible also clearly states this issue. Anyone who tries to usurp control is being used by the devil, so always keep your will and don't let anyone dominate or manipulate you. Remember that you have your own freedom and the right to make your own choices, and it's important not to let anyone take these things away from you. Jeber and Nabuta both possess a terrifying spirit of control. This spirit is not only powerful, but also so cruel that Nabon built a golden wall with the requirement that everyone worship it when the three Jewish friends were sad. And Abedo disobeyed, he pushed them, they in the furnace. This is a testament to the power and control of that spirit. If you recognize any signs of this spirit in those around you, I encourage, you should stay away from them. Their controlling spirit not only threatens your personal freedom, but also affects your safety. Protect yourself by staying away from people with a cruel and controlling spirit. The third sign that appears is the terrifying one that unintentionally makes us aware of the presence of a dark, demonic force that is not only an entity, but also a facilitator, a risky person waiting to happen, catch you in a cycle of sin. Facilitators not only push you to cross the line, they also offer opportunities, irresistible offers. They not only encourage you to commit crimes, but also offer the means resources so that you can take actions that you never thought of before. This person may be close to you. Someone you trust and depending on can create favorable conditions for you. Go to places you wouldn't dare to think about doing things you know you shouldn't do. But the question is whether this support person is really your friend or just a ghost, a force that is taking advantage of your weakness. Jesus warned about the dangers of facilitating people who commit another sin in chapter 9 verse 42. He said, but whoever causes one of the little ones to believe that I have sinned, let him be hanged on a heavy millstone and be thrown into the sea. That is an extremely serious warning about the consequences of enabling others and being destructive. So when we are faced with the signs of an enabler's presence, can we recognize and avoid the temptation that is coming from them? These words used to indicate the severity of the consequences that will come after death if someone has motivated someone else to commit a crime. Because does anyone in your circle allow it to happen? It is not a sign of a healthy environment. Think about the kind of people you want to be around. They may not give you direct advice to sin, but they will suggest you to stay away from Bible studies. And fourthly, they will urge you not to participate in prayer sessions, and they will use thousands of reasons to convince you to ignore sacred things. Their service is not to help you, but to harm you. They are bad type of people. Have you ever encountered such people? They have influenced. What is your spiritual life like? Share your feelings about this. You don't want people around you to ruin your faith and mission, right? They question the church's focus and self-interest. They even criticize the way people in your religious community treat you. But they don't encourage what happens when we accept these beliefs. Criticism and blaming others. Can we go further in the life of faith? 
If we do not face challenges and difficulties, these people never admit that. No church is perfect. But is it really beneficial for your ministry for them to just die without suggesting a solution? We need to be careful with this type of person. But is it the only way to progress in life? Living religiously is far from them altogether. Think about how you can face challenges together and strengthen your faith instead of just blaming and avoiding bad friends who can ruin your good habits. Us. But is there a way for God to lead us to meet people who offer real encouragement and support? Think about your mission and how you can build a stronger community of faith where each person is encouraged and encouraged in their mission on the path of faith and our mission. There are always people who bring different perspectives and challenges to us. They are people who disagree and do not fully support what we believe and do. But are they an obstacle or an opportunity for us to be stronger? Maybe the voices that oppose criticism are an indispensable part of life that makes us think and face questions that perhaps we have never thought of. But the important thing is not that we meet such people but that how we respond to them in our walk pushes us down. But on the contrary, they are the ones who willingly lift us up. So what do you think on our journey? How do we need to face opposing opinions to become stronger and whether our friends and companions in our faith walk influence our strength and patience? Share your thoughts. Remember that the strength of a true community comes not only from blind consensus, but also from the ability to accept and learn from diverse opinions. We need friends and companions not only to share our joys, but also to share our burdens and overcome difficulties together. We must learn how to deal with sin, especially hidden sin, whether they are from external or internal sources. No one can escape the struggles we have with rebelling against God's call on our lives. CF, Romans 3, 10, 23. However, it is possible to choose whether one will vigorously fight the battle that wages against the flesh or not. The battle can be overwhelming, but it does not have to result in demoralizing defeat. 1. Among many, devastating strategies of Satan, which is fed by our own shame, is to fight, or rather retreat, in silence. From the very beginning, sin resulted in hiding and shame as Adam and Eve hid from one another by covering themselves. CF Genesis 3:7 and from the presence of the Lord in the garden by crouching among the trees, cf Genesis 3, 8. A similar type of hiding is also evidenced in the refusal to own the sin when confronted. What do Adam and Eve do when confronted? They blame shift in order to direct the attention of the Lord away from self. They do not want to be seen in their sin so they justify it. The belief seems to be that, if the eyes of the Lord shift to the other and away from themselves, they can remain hidden. In either case, the sin is avoided, hidden away, and not dealt with in an honest manner. Our natural tendency is to not deal with sin. Out of sight. Out of mind. Or is it? The beauty of the cross is that we are clearly judged to be sinners, but given a new identity as redeemed, children of God, and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We do not have to hide our sin or justify it because Jesus has paid the penalty for us bringing us undeserved forgiveness. He hides our sin as far as the East is from the West, and He justifies us by His shed blood. However, until we reach heaven, we, the redeemed, wrestle with the realities of that old flesh. Sifreist, Romans 7. It does no good to be pretentious about our sin. It is useless to pretend that we are better than we are. I would rarely advocate wearing our sin on our sleeve, but it is futile to deny it or pretend it does not exist. In 2 Samuel 11, King David hides his sin so that it is not exposed. It is clear that a major point of this story is that hiding sins leads simply to more sin. He executes two plans, which involve even more sin, to keep his sin hidden. It is important to note the plans King David is willing to pursue in order to keep his sin from being exposed. It takes all of his energies, and the one sin multiplies itself into more sin. If it were not exposed by Nathan, the multiplying of sin might continue on for years. The primary turning point for sinful humanity is to see with our eyes what the Lord sees with His eyes. We need to see our lives as He sees them. Hiding is simply an attempt to divert one's and other's attention away from what is true, about self with the hopes that everything will be okay. We should not encourage or celebrate sin in people's lives nor should we completely disqualify their sins, whether or not that was the intention when they created it. The doctrine of mortal sin is a disqualifier that potentially robs people of the grace of God. We have been saved by grace, 
and God's grace brings forgiveness when we sin. If you have sinned today, you don't have to stay trapped in your sin. You can seek forgiveness, and Jesus will do what he promised. Forgive and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Let's pray that God will guide us to positive relationships and bring growth to our faith lives. Let's become strong, patient, and willing to share love and God's kindness to everyone around us. In this way, we can truly strengthen and encourage each other in God's work. Urge each other in God's work. Urge each other in God's work.